Hey, well, good Sunday evening to you guys. Howdy, everybody. I'm Brad. And I'm Krista. And you guys are getting ready to have a good time. So we yep. have got some really great, fun, interesting, good news stories for you. Um, everything from like tech stuff to human interest yep. stuff, uplifting things a la Paul Harvey, the late, the great, the awesome radio Paul Harvey rock star. Um, uh, and, and I'm just sick of the bad news. I'm, to I'm totally over it. Totally over it. Yeah. Done. So that's what yeah. we're going to do. We're going to have some really good news stories. We've got mm -hmm. eight ones today that there's one in there that I'm, I'll be surprised if you guys, um, cause I know a lot of you try to guess mm -hmm. the outcome. Cause a lot of the Paul Harvey type stories, they obviously have that little twist at the end. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. But there is one in there that I'll be surprised if you guess it. You're not allowed to Google it. That's cheating. No, no Googling. No Googling. No, no. Well, no web searching for it. Yeah, there let's you go. Not, let's not use the G, the G word. word. Yeah. It's no. a four letter word. Yeah. Google. <laughs> Got to be careful with that. <laughs> <laughs> Got to leave out a few letters. Yeah. But anyway, so what we do is we, we hang out for a little while while folks kind of shuffle in. We don't want anybody to be too terribly late. Nope. So we kind of give a recap of our week and then we read some good news stories. We pray and then uh, invite you to a Bible Devo uh, Monday through Friday yep. in, in the mornings. Yep. So stuff going on right now. How are you guys doing this week? Oh, there's Heather going batty. Hey, Heather. Jess is here. Mm -hmm. Delaney B, Tim. A lot of folks here tonight. This is good. Yep. So uh, we had a we had a chicken coop door failure. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't too, uh, it wasn't up there too terribly long either. Uh, we were trying to make something work out, out of what, what we, we had. had, and it didn't really work Well, for long, I should say. Yeah, now the question is what to do with it. Basically, it was an industrial strength, thick, double-paned glass door. Sliding glass door, door. yeah. And so we just kind of repurposed it, and mm -hmm. I used some heavy, like lag screws. Oh yeah, they were they were scary and heavy. You could have lifted up a truck with it. Oh, easy, easy. But the actual frame came apart. Yeah. The the, the whole thing kind of just went. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you know what? It's okay. We got a screaming deal. Oh, this door on is a cool. new door. It is a. Well, it's a single French door. They call it a 15 pane door. A 15 pane window pane door. Yep. Okay, I didn't know that. That yeah, is what he the said guy the 15 said. 15 pane door. Yeah, sure. So it's got 15 window panes in it. And it wasn't even a pane to put up. No, it was super easy. Um, and <laughs> get this, guys, it was only 36 bucks. Yeah. That was an awesome deal. So, I don't know if you have places where you're at, mm -hmm. like. Um, the restore will do like repurposed materials, right. mm -hmm. but up here there's a place called Hetches, and there's like um, I think there's one in Colby, and there's one further over towards I think Minnesota Menominee. Yeah, but they what they do Somewhere. is they get uh, building materials mm -hmm. that were ended up not being used. They buy them in bulk and then they just resell them cheap. They're like special order doors and windows, uh -huh. and. You know, or or factory seconds. You know, there might be something a little bit wrong with it or whatever. But it was um, they're perfect. It, it's a perfect door. It's for chickens, folks. It doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah. And I love the fact that it was only thirty six dollars. Yep. And it was super easy to put up. It's super light, and it lets a lot of light in for the chickens. And it lets lots of light in. It's a south. It, the door is south facing, so it'll be nice and sunny in there in the winter time and keep it nice and warm. Well, you know what's funny is that okay, um, our what? chickens. We have We're so spoiled. We have. Awesome. That, or I did it backwards. That's this means something different. I didn't mean it. I meant like you know when they, they go. Bah, yes. Like that. Mwah. Our chickens have the finest of finest. Yes. Yes, they even have, and this is actually truthful. Two chandeliers. Yep. In there. Yeah. Yep. When we moved into this house, we wanted to change out the light fixtures because they were there were some that were old and they were chandeliers. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to throw away a chandelier. And we asked all our friends around here. Nobody wanted them. Do you want a chandelier? No, I don't nope. want a chandelier. So I was like, you know what? I'm putting them in the chicken coop. Right. So there are two Just in the chicken coop. and Chandeliers. They are, they are a sight to behold. Real nice. Real, Real nice. nice. Yeah. No, they're a sight to behold. <laughs> 
They are. But, yeah. So do you guys, anybody else here have chickens and or chandeliers for your chickens? Because I dare say. I'm thinking not a lot of people have chandeliers for their chicken coops. No. No. That's that's a uh, Hey, simple, simple living. It's uh, it's here, the, uh, you're going to put it up I'll there? put it okay. in there. I'll put cool. it in there. Yeah, it's, it's actually, it's not Big Family Homestead. It's Big Family Devotions. Mm-hmm. So there we go. Okay, other stuff that's going on. We were blessed, oh, man, um, with 104 bales of hay. Yes, yes. And it's nice we quality hay. It's friend mm-hmm. friend at church said he has a farmer that uh, hays some fields that he doesn't use. And we said, you know what? We'll take it. Mm-hmm. We will take it. Yep. And well, and it was after what you had told him about what we're going to do with the sheep. So, um, yes. And now, so, should yeah. Should I tell? Sure. We've, we've mentioned this before, but it's a, it's a cool idea, and it was not my idea. It was an idea from a channel that we know, friend of the ch- well, friend of ours, mm-hmm. Bear Independent Knife Hands. He's a little more serious than we yeah. are. A little bit. And, yeah. He's, yeah, he's got a he's got a he funny needs, side well, to he him. Needs, but he needs to get a massage or something. But he's a little uptight there, Bear. <laughs> if he was here, I'd give him a little chop chop. I'd give him knife hands on his. He's 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 very very direct. Let's just say it that way. We love him. He's yeah. he's awesome. But it was his idea, and uh, I called him uh, to ask him if I could buy some sheep from him. <laughs> Because Krista finally waffled, caved. She crumbled because, like a paper bag. She of, went down like a sweet muffin. Because of what we will be doing with I them. know, I know. I'm just, so, I'm, I'm egging it on, you know? Totally, so, totally laying it on really thick there. He said, no, I can't sell you any sheep because I'm building Hebrew starter kits. Well, and he had just given away... All well, of his, but I said, "Well, what the heck is a Hebrew starter kit?" Yeah, that doesn't make any sense to me. He said, "Well, around here they've got a lot of people that they know that need to grow meat for their families, and they just can't afford it. Yeah. So he's raising these flocks of sheep to um, he's, he's a, a ram and two ewes, mm-hmm. and then he gives them away." Yep. And I thought, how cool is that? Right. I want to do that. And I said, "Sell me your sheep," and he said, "No, I can't. I'm giving them away. I don't have any more." So. so we bought sheep up here. Any more lambs, I should say. Right. And so we ha- ended up with two rams and four ewes. Mm-hmm. So this coming spring, I hope, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to mm-hmm. give away some, I don't want to call them Hebrew star kids. <laughs> it's, it might sound to people like we're being, you know, sheep denigrating. Trio. Sheep trio. I don't know. I will have to, how about you guys got any ideas? Yeah. That's. Lola Granola, she always comes up with cool mm-hmm. ideas. Yeah. You got any ideas? What should we call this thing? I'm I'm honestly just calling it a ministry because the mm-hmm. goal is we keep just the the, the, the two and the four, right? And then we give the rest away. Yep. So mm-hmm. as and just keep going. That's the mm-hmm. goal is that then whoever gets those, they keep some for themselves and they give some away. Yep. So that it, hopefully it just keeps going. Yep. Yep. So yeah. Thanks, Jess. I folded like a cheap lawn chair. That's great. Thanks. Especially if I'm sitting in Thanks, it. friend. <laughs> so yeah, we got hay for that. So that's that's what yeah. this this sheep and, hay for. And I and I will I will be completely transparent. I actually love those little guys. Those little sheep are so sweet. So oh, cute. Those. They are and I know not all sheep are uh, friendly. Ours are very friendly. Oh yeah. Yeah. So Yeah. Uh, Shannon Peace says, raised sheep for years, loved them, gives me an understanding of why the Lord calls us sheep. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And that's why I didn't want them in the beginning. So, yeah. Uh, pay it forward, sheep blessing. That's Homestead pretty cool. Homestead starter kit. That's a great way. Homestead starter kit. From, yeah. Bountiful yeah, blessings you get a, package. You get a chicken and two sheep. <laughs> yeah. A chicken and two sheep. <laughs> get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll have to great. think of that. Sheep for cheap. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. The ultimate cheap sheep. Yeah. Cheap sheep, yep. Cheap sheep, okay. So um, no, you don't have to register our sheep. No, no, we don't have to. No, it, registering animals is uh, if you want them to be to have to show them papers, and papers and to show them and to have pedigree. Um, no, this and, is to and, feed families. Yeah, this is just to feed families. That's all. And I got to be honest with you right now, up front, we raise our own beef, we raise our own chicken, mm-hmm. we've raised our own pork in the past. 
Mm-hmm. I don't think I'm going to be able to. To no, I'm going to have not. to send these sheep away. Right, they are so adorable. Mm-hmm. I don't. I mean, we would have to be starving. Oh yeah, yeah. We'd have let, to be starving for me to away. have to. That's funny. Uh, yeah, no, we would probably take them to. Uh, to uh, be done. To, yeah, to a butcher. I couldn't. Yeah. I don't think I could do it, especially no. that little Oreo. Oh no, those those are those are our pets. We wouldn't we wouldn't process oh, no. those. Yeah. So, but Oreo is so sweet. I figured out she's got on her breastplate right here mm-hmm. is a scratching spot. She loves and it, and she will come over and she'll climb on you mm-hmm. until you scratch her. So, mm-hmm. sheep. Yeah. There you go. All right. Um, other cool things going on. We've got relatives here. Jeez, oh, Scott, <laughs> push a sheep over a cliff and see where the rest of the flock goes. My goodness gracious. Somebody don't like sheep. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. Not everybody does. So, yes, we do have relatives here. Mm-hmm. That would be your kid. We do. Sorry. I was, Checking never mind. I was checked out for a second there. Um, yeah, uh, Jonathan and Jessica and Elijah are here. They've been here all week, which is awesome. Um, they came back to go to our, um, not our, but... Uh, there's a town nearby that have what's called Ice Age Days. It's Rib Lake. It's in Rib Lake, Wisconsin. And uh, so they actually met there uh, when they were in high school. And so they wanted to come back. And it's been, I think they've been together four years. Yeah. 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 So, and they, uh, well, the thing about Ice Age Days, it's like the ultimate small town party. Oh, totally. Everybody's out. Chit chatting. There's music. Food. Cheese. Drinks. Curds, I mean, just all cheese kinds. Cheese curds. Okay, yeah, that's the best part of that. Is the cheese curds. Yeah, they're the Lions Club, I think they yes, did it. The, the Lions, Lions Club. Club does a fundraiser and they sell cheese curds and curd burgers. And actually I think there was a green olive burger. Which oof. I don't know. anyway. Doesn't sound, doesn't sound too bad to me. Yeah. So yeah, it's um it's a really neat event for for everybody there. There so. was a Second Amendment uh, swap meet. Yes, there was. There you know was what I mean? a quilt show no mean, no and mean. a craft show, and um, there was a bake sale at the church. We got there at eleven o'clock in the morning. It was eleven o'clock in the morning, and they were sold out of so everything. Everything was gone. Cleaned it out. It was fantastic, <laughs> and that was on Saturday. Yeah. So they still had another, you know, another day of those of ladies sales need to get bacon. That, yeah. Well, they, they were out, so they closed down. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ice Age Days. It's, it's. I don't. It's. It's because of the. They. They call it that because there were glaciers that came through and yeah. carved out the the actual land, and so. So they say. They say Ice Age. So they say. Yes. But if you know anything about history you can see that mount saint helens proves that in a very short amount of time cataclysm can look like it took a long time to happen when it really really did right right so so yeah that's what we did yesterday it was it was a lot oh there was a car show lots of really cool cars yesterday yeah yes yeah yesterday i keep i've lost track of the days this week but and i know why yeah. Because tomorrow is a big day. Tomorrow dun, dun, dun. is a big day. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, we're starting school tomorrow. Yeah. We're starting school tomorrow. We're starting early. Homeschool. Because we've had a full three and a half months off. And we, we need to get back late, to it. Or we stopped early. We stopped early uh, because there were so many projects to get done. And we have caught up with most of our projects. We still have a lot of wood to split. To cut and split, um, I think we've got like three quarters of our pile to, to cut and split. But yeah, um, we'll do that. We do it slowly. We don't do. We're not going to bust our our rear ends getting it all done in one weekend because we're old. We're old. We're so old. We're so so dinosaur old. I I yeah I am considered older than the dinosaurs. Wow. But anyway, so still, we're not going to foxy to me. Ha. Goober. Um, So, yeah, that's pretty much the only project. And we'll do that on in the afternoons, you know, after school is done. So we'll do a little bit every day. That's how we do it. Spend an hour, hour and a half, you know, two hours getting it, you know, cut, split, stacked and done. So 
Uh, I live in Wisconsin's driftless area. The glaciers didn't come through here. Yes, yeah, as Funk Gotcha. Here. Yeah, around here, there's all these kind of. It's it's definitely had some kind of cataclysmic uh, geological event. Right. Right. But I'm I'm convinced it did not take millions of years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's Phoebe. that school already. Yes. Yep. Yeah, Bob. So. No, our kids did not get new clothes to start school. Because they don't need new clothes to start school. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here it is. It's time. It is time for... And I'm Krista. And this is where we share Our what we've learned this week. Thoughts. But we need you to share what you've learned this week. Phoebe, mm-hmm. what did you learn? Scott, what did you learn? Funk, senior, what did you learn? All of you guys, type... If something looks cool, catches our eye, we will definitely repeat it, and you will get cool points. You will be lauded and heralded among your peers as cool. (laughs) (laughs) So funny. (coughs) Excuse me. So what did you learn this week, honey? What I've learned this week is that all the planning you can do over the summer, over the last, you know, over the winter... Planning for new for school to start, you're still not ready. <laughs> All the planning. I'm still not ready. All the planning. So I spent. That's what I did this afternoon. Uh, I spent the afternoon um, getting the rest of you know the planning stuff done, and which is good. It's really good. It's all done now. We can. Re- we're ready to. We're ready to start now. Uh, Rose D says, "Old seeds will sprout." Yes. That's yeah. Sometimes yeah. they will. I learned that I need to downgrade, says Lola Granola, like <laughs> a, lot. a lot, um, uh, or a cot, either way. Oh, yeah. No, I'm thinking she's meant, I meant a lot. Yeah. I'm sure she meant a lot. Yeah. Why don't you grab a few of those? Monica says, don't wear white when processing strawberries. No. <laughs> That's if funny. meat doesn't smell rotten, does that mean it isn't? I... That's not a us That's question. Sorry, I can't answer that question. Well, nobody uh... needs to get sick and have it be our fault. No, no way. I learned learned not to cook supper while reading a book you can't put down. Burnt my supper. Oh no. Oh no. Um went around goodness. property learning what we can forage. That's cool to nice. me. Well done. Very cool. I learned not to eat fermented cukes with mold floating on the top of the brine. Terry, we need to talk. You. If there's mold no, no, no. on a food. Don't eat it. Generally, just put that one back. Get go no, get no, a different No, no, no. Don't jar. put it back. Don't put, put it back. back and dump don't it. Eat it. Don't, don't put eat it back. It. Put it back. No, no. Don't eat it. No, get don't rid of it. don't put it back. Get rid get of it. Get rid of it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Dormant unseen unseen lettuce seeds will come up in cooler August days. Yes. Yeah. Jesus healed my dog. He was almost a goner from eating oh, macadamia. No. Well, I'm glad your dog's I'm okay. I'm glad your dog's awesome. okay. Yeah. Wow. Yes, huh. that is the zoo in Marshfield. What, what are you yes. talking about? Uh, H. Tick has said, is that the zoo in Marshfield? Because you had a clip of the bears. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Those is. bears are cool. Those bears are really cool. Yep. So uh, what I learned is probably counterintuitive to a lot of people because <laughs> I've been in tech my whole life. Yeah. You know, ever since I've, I mean... I was in a recording studio at 12 years old, mm-hmm. but I'm learning that I I wish that the tech would slow down a little bit because as you get older, you have to learn a new language every time you get a new device, like whether it's a new phone or a new computer or a new this or that, every stupid company has to have their own word yeah. for this or that. And you got to, it's like learning a new language. And I wish that they would just slow down just a little bit. I'm yeah. I'm content where I'm at. Things look good. Mm-hmm. They sound good. Just slow down. Yeah. Oh yeah. So that's just me. Yeah. Anyway. So what you guys did? Did we get everybody? I think so. Cooked there so. twice. Yeah. It meat smelled fine, but it wasn't yuck. That is. Hey, Amen. Sorry. Just him. Goodness. Yeah. So another thing that's happened this week. Everybody's been sick. Oh, yeah, I got the COVID COVID again. Everybody's been sick. Yep, got it again. Yeah, yeah. Whatever so, new brand they're calling this one. Yeah. Actually, you know, I didn't get sick, but everybody else got yeah. sick. Yeah. 
Well, and that's the funny thing. We should all be very happy about this because when you really think about it, they've cured the common cold and flu. Mm -hmm. They don't sure. exist anymore. Sure. I don't, it's not what you had was not COVID. There's a, there's no, a new thing. No, it's not. Well, I, yes, there may be a new thing. We just had, a, they just had a cold. I do believe it was a cold. It was just a cold. But you can't say that you anymore. You can't say that anymore. Just that. Yeah. Yeah. It's we just did have a it cold. for real, real. We yeah, we did in twenty twenty. Yeah. Um and we may have gotten the Delta, but I don't I don't we know we don't I think I did. We may have, but I don't know. I think I did. Yeah. See, because so. it I kind of just made my mind up. We were not going down that road, at least for me. Yeah. Not going down that road. And you know what? It was a cold for us. Yeah. Yeah. And I understand, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say you. if you went a different route, I'm saying you you go whatever right. route between you and God and your doctor. That's right. That's it. Right. But um, we went a different route, mm -hmm. and we've been fine. Yep. But this is not medical advice. I'm not nope. trying to tell you to do anything it's at all. It's just what we did. between you and God mm -hmm. and your doctor. Yep. So, all right. I think that... Um, yeah, it's just about time. Uh, I, I think I'm ready for some good news. I hope you guys are. You guys ready for some good news? Is this when they're, the crowd goes answering. wild? They're not answering. You got to say yay or check mark or <laughs> clapping <laughs> emojis or something. Yeah? So did we decide if you were odd? Well, I know you're odd, but are you no, odd No, my dear, even? you're odd. Am I odd? You are technically odd. Figuratively. <laughs> Figuratively and actually. And I've got the first story since that's an odd number. Because it's an odd number, right? So All right. You guys may have heard this one. This was um this was an interesting story. It's a short story, not a lot to it. So I'm gonna put the picture up and there's no surprise. A group of cave explorers in Missouri accidentally found an elderly dog that had been missing for months. Rick Haley said he found the dog along with a fellow cave explorer, Jerry Keene, while exploring a cave system in Perry County, Missouri last week. I'm at a caving project in Perry County where a handful of groups entered the cave. <clears throat> One group discovered a dog in the cave. Jerry Keene and I facilitated <coughs> excuse me, a cave rescue of the dog. The dog was not in good shape. Hmm. We packaged the dog in a duffel bag with her head sticking out. This was to protect her when the rescuers and the rescuers as she would likely struggle when removing her from the cave. We moved her 500 feet to a very tight, awkward vertical climb, handing her hand to hand upward to the surface. Wow. She was totally cooperative. Abby, the dog, was found between Brewer and Perryville in Moore Cave System, the second large case, cave system in the state, more than 22 miles long. Haley and Keene were able to find Abby's owners uh, by going door to door locally. Mm. Isn't that cool? That is really cool. But 22 mile long cave. Yeah. It's insane. Well, and how, I mean, we'll never know, but no. how the heck did the dog get down there? No idea. She must have found some weird <laughs> entrance. Yeah, but, 500 feet down. Yeah. Yeah, huh. she must have found a weird interest. I mean, if it's 22 feet, 22 miles long, you know, she yeah. must have found some weird interest. Turned out okay. Dog's yeah, fine. Yeah, she's fine. Dog's fine. So on the streets of Philadelphia, horses are helping. On the streets of Philadelphia, this guys. Is streets okay? of Philly. Tree, streets of Philly. Got, got to get that in your mind. <coughs> horses are helping disadvantaged young people gallop towards a brighter future. In the U.S. city of Philadelphia last year, okay, this is the article was uh, written at a different written time in England uh, or London or yeah. In the U.S. city of Philadelphia last year, there were two thousand three hundred and twenty-six victims of shooting, um, the highest on record. Against this backdrop of violence, increasing numbers of young people are turning to Fletcher Street Urban Riding Club in search of a safe haven. According to its founder, 83-year-old Ellis Eldog Farrell. Eldog. Eldog, yeah. <laughs> Located in an, in, in an impoverished inner city neighborhood, the club offers young people the chance to learn to ride and care for horses whilst teaching life skills and promoting academic excellence. The club stems from a long tradition of urban black cowboys. 
After the Civil War, being a cowboy was one of the few jobs open to black men, and many traveled to the northern states and cities like Philadelphia, where ranching was more profitable. Cool. Yeah, Farrell started working with the hor- with horses after a stint in the army, pouring all of his earnings into buying nags destined for the slaughterhouse at auction. The teaching neighborhood kids how to ride, or and teaching them how to ride. They officially became a nonprofit in 2004, so they could start accepting donations for the community work that Farrell and generations of black cowboys had been doing for decades, free of charge. Sweet. I want to give these kids something to do and keep them off the streets, Farrell told Positive News. They've got they if they got nothing to do, they might get into trouble, and that is so true. You know, L Dog. He deserves a Culver's burger. Totally does. Oh, totally dog, you does. come see me. We'll take you to Culver's. Yeah. Extra crispy fries, the works, bro. You are doing mm-hmm. a good thing. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I, okay. I think I would totally be thrown if I saw a horse in, in the Philly. city. In, in, in the inner city. Yeah. I think it would be just hysterical. Yeah. In Philly, horses and peacocks are legal. Chickens are not. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> wow. Gino oh, steaks are the best, says Martha. The cheese steaks. Oh, gotcha. <coughs> I've never had one. I've never been to Philly. Yeah, there, there's there's two competing brands, and everybody says Gino's are the best. Gotcha. All we'll right, have to let me look take out a for those. Of water here. Yeah, he's got a he's got a cough. There's don't forget. There's I've one, one in right my here mouth too. Right now. <laughs> yeah, there's one right here too that yeah. you. Hopefully, I so. won't choke. That would be that would make for exciting uh, live stream though. Yeah, that's true. You know how that to do. Is true. Uh, Heimlich, the, yes, the I do. Schmendrick maneuver. The Schmendrick maneuver, yes. Yeah, it's a little different, table. yeah. <laughs> a little, a little more violent than the Heimlich maneuver. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here we go. Oh my goodness. This is interesting. Um, it's it's n- technology, and I think <clears throat> it could be beneficial. It's um. The dream of a new and ambitious mode of freight transportation just took a big leap forward toward reality in Switzerland. On August 1st, planning stages commenced to build an automated tunnel network that would ship cargo and shipping pods on a self-charging rail system under the ground. Cargo Sioux Terrain, or underground cargo, will begin a 46-mile stretch between Zurich and a major logistics hub in Harken, Harkengen. And it could grow to as many as 310 miles <clears throat> of tunnels, connecting all the Swiss cantons. Running off renewable energy, the project is estimated to take <clears throat> to be able to take 40% of all freight bearing traffic off the roadways in a sustainable way that doesn't involve clearing any land for any additional roads. The electric pods would receive ongoing electric charges as they, as they move along the induction rails. <clears throat> the project seems very similar to various types of Hyperloop ideas for American passenger transport, but if billions are to be spent and the Swiss will have to find $35 billion in order to do this project, the whole project could be completed by 2045. Mm. Freight systems seem a much smarter use of underground rails since, to a certain degree, safety, comfort, and aesthetics won't necessarily have to factor into the design. Interesting. So what you've got, robotic pods Mm -hmm. that you can fit pallets of goods onto, and they are powered by those rails, and then uh, there's little podlets on the rails above it, like baskets. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. That is really cool, but I think that's that's going to put a lot of people out of work, to be honest. You know, I've I, I have actually thought about future like that. Mm-hmm. Robots are going to inevitably to replace m- many jobs. I know, I know, and it just some jobs cannot be mechanized like that. Well, but that's that's really the question: is uh, what's next? Because technology is not going to stop. No. No. So people have to adapt. Mm-hmm. People have to adapt to whatever the next thing is. Do we have to, though? 
we are, but in, we're kind of reverting. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we totally Instead are. Instead of more tech, more tech, we're mm-hmm. learning how to grow more, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't. See, I don't see a way around it, guys. I mean, I don't know if you've been seeing the advertisements. Believe it or not, fully automated cooking systems, including fries, fryers, burgers, <coughs> for fast food joints. Ugh. It's going to replace a lot of people, which yeah. I agree. I don't like that idea. But no, no. It's inevitable. Right. So the right. question then is how do you encourage people to... <clears throat> Find whatever the next thing is, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. On to the next story. Hey, this shoot really cool. up a prayer, guys. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to make it the whole way here. I'm going to try, but I'm, I'm dying of coughing here. Yeah. All right. There were labor union meetings all over town that night, and yet the largest by far was the demonstration held in Haymarket Square. Three speakers were scheduled to address an audience of 1,200-plus Chicago workers. The subject was police bruta- brutality. The first talk was, social- was socialist revolutionary August Spies. His 20-minute speech was mild for him, but there was no mitigating the incendiary, incendiary atmosphere. The famous anarchist Albert Parsons was next. And yet he too sensed that any word might be a match to kerosene. And so he was reluctant to ramjet his rhetoric. By the time the third speaker stood, it seemed as though the evening might end peacefully after all. A chilly rain had sent all but 300 of them home. Those stalwart few did not appear particularly angry, but then something ironic and awful happened. As the last speaker, it was a teamster named Felden, Fielden, Fielden, yeah, Fielden, Mm -hmm. uttered these words in conclusion. As he spoke those two words, 180 police officers arrived on the scene. One of the policemen, uh, Captain Ward, ordered the meeting to disperse. And then, without warning, an unseen hand hurled a dynamite bomb at the police. It exploded among them. It killed seven and wounded 70. The authorities launched a full-scale search for the bomb thrower. The newspapers condemned the socialists and anarchists, and the history books would would remember forever what happened in May of 1886 as the Haymaker Riot. As the smoke from the explosives cleared, a host of Chicago's high and mighty were revealed, quaking in their boots. Meatpacking and railroading the retailing tycoons were now suddenly vulnerable as never before, and fearful that the enraged workers in their midst might come to attack them in their homes. And as the fat cats trembled citywide, those who lived in the high-fashion lakefront suburb of Lake Forest decided to defend themselves. And in a remarkably clear, uh, in a remarkably clever if extraordinarily costly way, anxious Lake Forest families prevailed in the Commercial Club of Chicago and on the Chicago Board of Trade to make real estate to make a real estate deal, the most lopsided real estate deal since Manhattan Island sold for twenty eight dollars. Hmm. They charged the federal government, and this in- infuriates me, ten dollars for six hundred and ninety eight acres of prime late lakefront property, provided the War Department would build a there a military reservation and thus would armed would arm soldiers constantly stand on guard between the palatial Jeez. mansions of the North Shore and the labor <laughs> agitators and the anarchists of Chicago. And that's how Fort Sheridan was born. Not exactly a fort but rather as what we would you say rather as a kind of guardhouse for the rich and powerful and by the way now and now is more than 100 years later you may have heard that the federal government closed the military reservation around the united states or i'm sorry is closing military reservations around the united states and phasing out others and one of those 
uh, that has closed is Fort Sheridan, north of Chicago. And the almost 700 acres for which the government once paid $10 may now uh, was sold to developers for more than $200 million. (laughs) And I looked it up, actually, because I was curious. I didn't actually find out the date it was sold or for the exact amount. Um, But the government did retain 90 acres for a cemetery there. Um, And on the beach... Uh, they had to close it last last April because um, last April 2021 because they found uh, three uh, explosives that they needed to um, from, from the base. Uh, yeah from the base they needed to uh, evacuate. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so it's just that's infuriating. They spent they bought it for ten dollars, seven hundred acres, and sold it for well it was over two hundred million dollars. Just a buffer between the rich people. And, and the and, poor people. And the poor people, right, right. Keep your ilk over there. Yeah, just infuriated. That's, yeah. anyway. So, All right. Well, I'm not sure if that's really a good story. It's an interesting it's history. It's an interesting history story, but not a, a good news story. Yeah. So. Um, speaking of um, insanely profitable commercial timeouts. Yes. Which we never have those. Because they're never insanely profitable. But no, not really. <laughs> they do help us out. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> not insanely profitable. No, they're not. No. Uh, but if you want to help out, there's links down below. You mm-hmm. can buy stuff from the store yeah. uh, at our bigfamilyhomestead.com uh, store. <coughs> yeah. Um, and or become a Patreon partner. And that does help us out, too, to get gear and pay the bills and all the yada yep. yadas and yippee skippies. Pays the internet bills. <laughs> <coughs> Goodness. I'm sorry guys. I I am I'm going to have to beg your indulgence. I don't think I can keep going like this. Um It's got some post nasal drip going. I'm going to end up starting. I can feel my throat and it's it's going to be bad if oh, no. I if I don't um stop. Yeah. Sorry. So would you like to read one more and I shut up? I I can keep reading, I suppose. If you want to read the last one. Okay. Wait, which one? Let's see. The very last yeah, one. Yeah, let's do that one. And then we'll save these other ones for uh, next week. Um, because I, yes. if I keep talking, I'm just going to start gonna be coughing. Bad. And it's going to be bad. I get in these coughing fits that I can't stop. No. Mm-mm. So no. I'll be quiet. Yeah. And this story, because I really wanted you to hear this story. because This, this is really a great cool. story. All right. I need my readers, my old lady, my grandma glasses. It was a late Sunday night. The pale winter moon had risen high in the Manhattan sky. Speaking of Manhattan, uh, the sounds of city life were growing ever more distant now. And as though some magical mist has descended upon the town, at least that's how it seemed to Mr. Mr. Beelan as he stood quietly at his window that he were gazing out over a vanishing brigadoon and as a as sorry and as so often occurred in the hush of those late hours the ghosts of which of much earlier ones gathered about him and tonight in particular the gentle smiling phantoms of a family called the o'haras how very far away and long ago was mr Beelan's childhood on the lower east side and the tenement building at 330 Cherry Street and the Irish neighbors who, despite their poverty, managed to make a Christmas such no such as no palace had ever seen. And the further Mr. Beelan wandered down the byways of the past and quieter in the evening became until it felt as though the darkness itself had held its breath in a perfectly still and silent night. And suddenly it was another time. Every year there had been such a splendid Christmas tree at the O'Hara apartment. Mr. Beelan's boyhood self st- would stare at the shining ornaments for hours. His parents did not particularly approve. The Beelan family were Jewish immigrants, you see. In fact, father was a cantor at the local synagogue, yet mostly because Mr. and Mrs. O'Hara and their children made Christmas seem 
Such glorious fun, Mr. Beelan, even, even long after he had left the steaming, teeming tenement on Cherry Street, would recall with great fondness a, jo- a Jewish boy's Christmas times on the Lower East Side of New York. In his adult years, Mr. Beelan business traveled. He never really minded it except when obligations kept him in Los Angeles over the holidays. It just didn't seem like Christmas, he said, with all of the palm trees and the sunshine. Well, there was always there. Well, there was and always will be a little corner in his heart reserved for that special occasion, that special season, a nostalgia that was born beneath a Christmas tree that had once sprouted in a slum. And at once the ghosts of Christmases past danced away in the midst of their own forever, leaving the night perfectly still and silent as before. But then soaring lightly out of the distance, distant realms of space and time came a medley. Melody. Melody. Yeah. No, that's okay. A haunting melisma of musical musical notes, eventually a procession of wistful words and poignant uh, ima- imagery accompanying it, and for the breath and for breathless moments, Mr. Beelan listened as the music and words invented themselves. It was the most beautiful song he had ever heard. He exclaimed under his breath, and yet he was not actually hearing it at all, nor was his was he writing it. But rather he was listening, intently hoping with all of his might to remember the ma- magical echoes when the angel voices were still once more. The faint light of dawn was announcing Monday morning when at last Mr. Beelan emerging from his trance. And yet by then, the music and the lyrics had that had blossomed somehow from his nocturnal reverie were, were lazed in his brain and would soon thereafter find a home in the hearts of and minds of millions of us. Most or all of your life, you've known and loved the simple tune in the eloquent words that combined to comprise one of the world's most popular of all songs. And yet now and henceforth, whenever you hear it, I hope you recall the O'Hara family of Cherry Street and the neighbor boy, Israel Beelan, whose name appears on the sheet mu- music as Irving Berlin, the sheet music to the enchanted carol called White Christmas. Wow. Yeah. Written by a Jewish guy. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Yes. Yes. That was very cool. So, Heartwarming. Very. Very. Wow. wow. Pretty cool. So yeah. I apologize, guys, but I'm going to have to dip out because yeah. if I keep talking, I'm just going to start coughing. And <laughs> then that, that doesn't make for a very fun show. Mm-mm. No. No, so, and I, I'm not very fun to uh, listen to by myself. So. Tell them about the uh, Bible devotion. Bible devotion, Monday through Friday, 8.30 Central, <laughs> um, 8.30 a.m. Central. Um, big family devotions. I can put the link again, I believe. And yes, just, I can, right there. Just so you so. know, it is it is me doing that devotion, uh, yes. but we keep it really fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're starting a new book tomorrow. What? Do you know what? Yet? I'm not telling because okay. there's a lot of our people. Oh, well, that's here. true. That's true. Yeah, and they, it's a surprise. They, 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 they. He does a really good job, and everybody does not. Um, we don't pick at each other. We don't pick at each other. We're not. We're not debating denomination stuff. We they just read the scripture and just unpack it. Yep, so we unpack it. And yeah. Then pray for each other, and it's exactly. been really, really cool. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So anyway, yes, that is one of our favorite movies as well. We'll have to do these extra stories next week. Yes. And I'll have extra voice. Yes. So that said, uh, we're going to pray real quick mm-hmm. and, and um, have a great night. Yeah. So Father God, thank you for bringing each and every one of these folks here. Please bless them. Love on them. Let them know that you care no matter what. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's it, guys. Yes. Have an awesome and blessed Oops. night. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your
Don't come. 